praise the Lord, somebody. And hallelujah. Are you glad to be here this evening? And let's all say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Father. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us this far. Lord, we are forever and forever grateful for this meeting and more so for the fact that, Lord, you are here with us tonight again. Lord, as often as we come before you in your house, you are faithful. You always appear in our midst. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Lord, we give you all the adoration. Therefore, once again, we pray the Lord you descend into our midst. Give us your word. Hear our prayers. Revive us. Give us your spirit. And Lord, let not, let not even one iota of our blessings be denied us. That we all may receive every blessing the Lord we've ordained for us before time began. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all be seated. Praise the Lord. We enter yet another day of our uh, 14 days of prayer and fasting. And tonight also we are going live. Live to Michelle Camp, live to Teshin, and uh, they are with us live in Neighbor Town. So we more or less having a joint meeting. Though we are separated by space, we are all together in a joint meeting. Hallelujah. And therefore, I would like to welcome every one of us to this evening's meeting. Um, as we hear the word of God, receive the word, and we enter into prayer, remember that the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is all over this place. When I say this place, I mean all the branches, including we say come, church and Eboy town. If it had been in the Old Testament days, by now the smoke, the smoke or the cloud or the fire would have appeared between the cherubim on the mercy seat, on the atonement seat, on top of the Ark of the Covenant. But we have a better, we have a better covenant and we are in a better place. Therefore, are we more blessed. Amen. Today we're looking at the title, The Copies and the Heavenly Things. The Copies. C-O-P-I-E-S. The Copies. Copying. The Copies and the Heavenly Things. The Copies and the Heavenly Things. And our scripture is from Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, 22 to 28. The copies and the heavenly things. Hebrews 9, verses 22 to 28. In fact, and I'm reading for the NIV again, the New International Version of the Bible. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. 
He entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest entered the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Then Christ will have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to appear, sorry, to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible is saying that the tabernacle that we're talking about that was built by Moses, David, here on earth. Uh, that the earthly tabernacle, the earthly sanctuary, and all the things that were in it were actually, they were actually copies. They were images of the original, true one that was in heaven. And we said before, I think on day one, that the construction of the earthly tabernacle, the sanctuary here on earth, the construction of it was by Moses or David. You have the tabernacle of Moses, tabernacle of David. But the architects, the architecture, the design was actually given by God. God told Moses exactly how to build or to construct the tabernacle. The same thing therefore existed. The original one, the true one existed in heaven. That was heaven itself. That was heaven itself. So the earthly sanctuary was only a copy of what existed in heaven. Just say amen to that. Hallelujah. Therefore, when we go to um, 23, Bible said, it was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things. It was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. In the same way as all things are purified with blood, all things must be purified with blood, it became necessary that the earthly tabernacle be purified with blood. That is animal blood. The early sanctuary was purified with animal blood. This must happen, this should have happened. This ought to happen before God. God for God to meet with the high priest on behalf of the Israelites, this was a requirement. The tabernacle had been purified with blood. And here on earth, it was the blood of animals. But it, it sufficed. It was okay. It was sufficient for that time. Though it was just a cleansing of the outward, at that time, it was okay to God. Whilst God was waiting for the perfect cleansing, the perfect purging to come. Yes. Put your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Beloved, um, God's covenant with Israel from the beginning and God's covenant with us required that blood, blood must be shed. Not innocent blood, but things must be purified with blood. So that when we go to the book of Exodus chapter 4, Exodus 4, verses 24 to 20, 26, Exodus chapter 4, Exodus 4, 24 to 
26. At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin, and touched Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom, the New King James says, you are a husband of blood to me. You are a husband of blood to me. She said, so the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to the circumcision. Now, the background to this story is that the time I come for God to deliver Israel from Egypt, from the house of bondage, and God needed a deliverer. God needed a leader whom he will send to Egypt and through him or use him to deliver Israel from the land of Egypt, from slavery, from the house of bondage. And God had appeared to Moses uh, in the burning bush, miraculously, dramatically. And God had insisted, though Moses was reluctant to go, God had insisted that he, Moses, was the chosen one. He had to go. No one else. And don't forget, Moses is a type of Jesus. Moses is a type of Jesus. The same way that Jesus was the only one who can deliver. And Moses was the only one who could go and deliver Israel out of Egypt. And God had told him all that he had to do. Everything was done. And Moses set set off on the land of Midian to go to Egypt to go and deliver God's children from Egypt. And he took his wife and his son with him. Now, despite all this, the Bible said that when Moses came to a place where he camped, because it was a long journey, he camped on the way, he had to stop somewhere and rest. But then God came to Moses and uh, wanted to kill Moses. Can you believe that? God came and sought. God was about to kill Moses. This same Moses that God has said was the only one who he wanted to send to Egypt to deliver his children Israel out of Egypt. And God had given him two or three miraculous signs so that the people would believe him. God had anointed him, ordained him to go. Now, God met him at the camp place, the lodging place, and God wanted to kill him. Why? Why? Because Mo 